Now let's move on to the next learning objective, which is, is how to control a ventilator to improve oxygenation and ventilation. Well, there are things you can do to adjust on the ventilator to improve oxygenation, and there are things you can adjust on the ventilator to improve ventilation. And in Mechanical Ventilation 101, we place a brick wall between the two. Those things you adjust to improve oxygenation are different than the variables you adjust to improve ventilation. The truth is, as you get more advanced in how to deal with mechanical ventilation, you identify that there are overlap between the two. But truly, 90% of the time, it's simple enough to think of it this way. When it comes to oxygenation, there are three things you can adjust. The most obvious is you can adjust the FiO2. You can increase the amount of inspired oxygen that the patient's delivering. Remember, we all have 21%. We're all breathing 21% oxygen from room air. But you can go up to 100% when you have a patient who's invasively ventilated. We like to keep it below 60% because we think that above 60%, you have free radical toxicity and sort of chronic problems. The other thing that you can adjust that most students know already is you can adjust the PEEP. So what is PEEP? Well, this isn't exactly true, but I think it's mostly true. PEEP is the same as CPAP. It's a constant pressure that's delivered to a patient that stents the airways open. This pressure is measured in centimeters of water, and a typical number is about five or six. And if a patient has trouble oxygenating, well, you increase it. Usually you can increase it by factors of one or two. So if you're at six, you go to eight, and if you're at eight, you go to 10 or nine. And it goes higher and higher. A you get into high levels when you're somewhere around 15. I'll say it again. If you have problems with oxygenation, you increase the FiO2 up to about 60% or for short periods up to 100%. And the other thing you can do is you can adjust the PEEP. You can increase the PEEP, which opens up the airways and allows for better oxygenation. The other thing you can do is you can actually adjust what's called the inspiratory time. And inspiratory time is the amount of time that the patient is taking a breath in, the amount of time that you're at a higher pressure than the PEEP. So why does increasing the eye time help with oxygenation? Because PEEP and eye time combined affect mean airway pressure. And really what improves oxygenation is mean airway pressure, increasing the mean airway pressure, because most patients, their lungs are under-expanded when they're mechanically ventilated. And by increasing the mean airway pressure, you're opening up the lungs and allowing for better VQ matching. We'll get to that again in a minute. So to review for oxygenation, you can adjust the FiO2, you can increase the PEEP, or you can increase the eye time. The truth is, is sometimes you can increase the PEEP too much and you start causing problems. But that again is beyond the scope of this video. So that's one side of the brick wall for oxygenation. Now let's go to the other side of the brick wall for ventilation. In ventilation, you can adjust the tidal volume. And this gets a little bit complicated because within tidal volume, you can manage that tidal volume of one of two ways. You can have what's called volume regulated, or you can have what's called pressure regulated. And you can only choose one or the other. So you can choose to set the tidal volume or you can choose to set the peak inspiratory pressure. This is often referred to as PIP. And so let's say you set the tidal volume, and you set the tidal volume to 300 milliliters. Well, based on the compliance of the lungs, the PIP will vary, because you're again only controlling one. I've set the tidal volume to 300, and the machine is gonna deliver 300 milliliters of breath no matter what, and the PIP will vary based on the compliance of the lungs. If you or I were to be mechanically ventilated, our pips would be maybe somewhere between 10 and 15 centimeters of water pressure. Now, if you have a really sick patient, it may take 30 centimeters of water to deliver the exact same tidal volume. Now, let's jump to pressure regulated again. You can tell a machine, I want you to deliver 20 centimeters of pressure every time the patient takes a breath. And guess what? The tidal volume varies. And based on the compliance of the lung, it may be 300 milliliters, it may be 250 milliliters, and it may be 500 milliliters. 
Now, why you choose one or the other, meaning volume regulated or pressure regulated, is dependent on a whole host of factors, but it usually comes down to simply provider preference. The other thing when it comes to ventilation that you can control in addition to tidal volume is the respiratory rate. And this goes back to choosing the type of ventilator mode. It becomes a little confusing because in pressure support CPAP, you don't set a rate at all. The patient breathes as fast or slow as they want. So you can't control the minute ventilation on pressure support CPAP mode. Within assist control, you set a minimum rate on the ventilator, meaning if you were to all of a sudden paralyze and sedate the patient and the patient stopped breathing altogether, the machine would still deliver a certain minimum amount of minute ventilation. By and large, in assist control, you're controlling minute ventilation by adjusting the tidal volume through either volume regulated or pressure regulated. And the patient is helping determine minute ventilation by how fast they breathe. In SIMV, you control minute ventilation through by setting a maximum rate and also by controlling the tidal volume. Now we're going to jump to review oxygenation and ventilation by integrating the foundational knowledge of how to ventilate and oxygenate with the variables that we just talked about. Again, we have oxygenation and ventilation, and we have the brick wall in between. With oxygenation, we're optimizing the mean airway pressure by adjusting the PEEP or eye time. This means that in most cases, we increase the PEEP or increase the eye time to increase the mean airway pressure. And by optimizing the mean airway pressure, we optimize VQ matching or ventilation perfusion matching. To jump back to foundational knowledge, it's that ideal match of ventilation and perfusion that leads to the best oxygenation. And I've used the word optimizing instead of increasing because most of the time we increase these variables. But there are certain cases where that doesn't work because the patients already have too much in mean airway pressure. With ventilation, it's a little more straightforward because you adjust the, either the rate or the tidal volume on a ventilator, or both, and rate times tidal volume is minute ventilation. And minute ventilation is what drives the expiration of CO2. So by increasing the rate or increasing the tidal volume, you can get rid of more CO2. Let's just review the objectives quickly. We've talked about the indications and contraindications of mechanical ventilation, We've differentiated between the modes of ventilation, meaning non-invasive and invasive, and then within those modes of synchronized ventilation, assist control, SIMV, or that mode of ventilation that really provides very little support, CPAP slash pressure support. We've talked about applying different variables to improve oxygenation or ventilation. You can increase the FiO2, you can adjust the PEEP, you can adjust the eye time. All those go along with helping with oxygenation. Or when it comes to ventilation, you can adjust the tidal volume or peak inspiratory pressure. You can't control both, only one or the other. You can choose a ventilator mode, which helps determine the respiratory rate, which also goes along with minute ventilation. And then we've combined those variables, and we've talked about how they are integrated into the foundational knowledge of oxygenation or VQ matching and minute ventilation. And with that, we're done.